in terms of differences between China and India, although these are not polar opposites, what has struck me greatly about China is the high level of pragmatism, while a distinctive feature of India is a propensity for engaging in debate. A great example of pragmatism can be seen from a famous statement made by Deng Xiaoping, the leader who opened up the Chinese economy in the late 1970s. Bu Guan he mao bai mao, zhou dao lao shu, zhou shi hao mao, which means it doesn't matter whether a cat is black or white as long as it catches mice. This attitude combined with discipline and hard work has helped the country make rapid progress as an economy. Now turning to India, the propensity to debate you find there, one just has to turn on a TV news channel and you can hear multiple contrarian views, perhaps reflects its tremendous cultural diversity. And an advantage of debate is that potentially solutions emerge that take multiple perspectives into account in a dynamic, energetic way that also perhaps results in an ability to thrive in chaos. Of course, this propensity for debate likely also reflects the country's history with a political system that was heavily influenced by its strong British connection. Thus, in my view, culture cannot be seen in isolation, but also needs to consider the role of history, both in terms of the last couple of centuries where European, specifically British, influence has played out in very different ways in these two countries, as well as in the last 40 years. China opened up its economy in 1978, over a decade before India did. Thus, in 1992, while India was barely a year into its liberalization program, Deng Xiaoping was able to consolidate the preceding year's progress and turbocharge the reform process in his famous tour of southern China. And although back then these economies were not dramatically different in size, today they are. So in sum, when one considers differences between China and India, it's important to take a holistic view of not only culture, but also the economic and political systems and realities. While there's no doubt that doing in, uh, business in China is challenging for international companies, there's also an opportunity, which is to learn from its dynamic, highly digitalized economy. Additionally, India has its own unique advantages for example, the Mars mission a few years ago demonstrated ingenuity and an ability to make a big impact on a limited budget. In fact, the Indian Mars mission costs less money than a Hollywood movie about a mission to Mars. Having talked to hundreds of multinational company managers in both China and India, what I'm seeing is that there is a huge missed opportunity to combine the competencies and ideas that both countries have to offer. Uh, and I do hope some Western multinationals will attempt this, even in a small way, uh, maybe just through a pilot project or two even. One of the best examples I've seen in my research, uh, which is about how large corporations partner with startups, was the launch of the Microsoft Accelerator program some years ago, involving Microsoft subsidiaries in China, India, as well as Israel. And together they generated what has become a high impact startup engagement program that harnessed the significant talent in China and India, and of course also Israel, not only separately, but also jointly. One more thing worth mentioning is that I find a great deal of ignorance in each country about the other. Perhaps as a result, there's a big difference I find in terms of the lens through which people in China and India view the other country. I'm referring to people that I meet on an everyday basis. I'm not talking about officials or journalists, but just regular people that I teach and interact with. Most Indians I know view China through the lens of border tensions, while by contrast, most Chinese people I know have never heard about much of this history and instead refer more to yoga or Bollywood when they talk about India. Thus, the more there are efforts from people of each country to learn from more about the other, the better it will be possible to appreciate how they differ from each other and the surprising similarities and shared aspirations that they may have. Speaking for myself, it has been a privilege to live in and observe China evolving in these incredibly fascinating times and in the process 
I've gained a better understanding of the world. Thank <laughs> you.